Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and this is LG V30. This is way better than any other phone LG's ever made, and it is so very 2017. So LG was nice enough to send over a V30 a little bit early for me to take a look at it, so I've spent a little time with it, and it's kind of funny, it's basically the opposite of the essential phone I just reviewed, like in every imaginable way. It's kind of impressive. One is a, a minimal, sort of bare bones, small stock phone from a pretty new company, while the other is a big, feature packed, really richly enhanced Android flagship from a, a well established company that's done this before. Now, technically, they don't want us reviewing it yet, since this is pre release hardware and software, but I really want to share it with you guys because it's so good. So, these are the top five things that you should know about this phone in order. So number five is all the little things, all the attention to detail in this phone. And I think a lot of this can come from the fact that LG has had a lot to learn from the V20 and the G6 and the G5, but some of it is just knowing what people want. And this phone checks pretty much all of the boxes imaginable. It has expandable storage via micro SD for those who like it. It has wireless charging. It has fast charging. It has USB type C, of course. It has IP certified waterproofing. It has a headphone jack, and not only does it have a headphone jack, but it backs it up with a 32-bit quad DAC that audio enthusiasts will really like. Uh, the removable battery might be gone, but the 3300 milliamp hour battery on board here is pretty promising, if not standard, for uh, this size. It's not something I've tested, but fast charging and wireless charging should back that up. So again, it seems like the opposite of that essential phone, which for 700 bucks had literally none of the things that I just mentioned. It gets the fingerprint reader right also. It puts it in the middle of the back. If you're gonna put it on the back of the phone, that's where it's actually reachable, <laughs> Samsung. Uh, and it also doubles as a power button still, which is kind of LG's thing. So the V30 checks all the boxes in a way that no other smartphone this year really has, except for maybe the $1,000 Note 8. So number four, is the software. And I've said this a couple times in previous videos, but I'm not the biggest Android skin fan, so it takes a lot for me to say this about a phone, but I really don't mind this skin. And I think a big part of that for me is how many features LG's added. Again, think the opposite of the essential phone. This is an LG skin on top of Android 7.1.2, fingers crossed for it getting updated to 8.0 quickly. And right off the bat, it doesn't feel too cartoonish or weird. There is a bit of bloatware, but most of it you can remove or hide if you want. And performance is not only smooth, as you would expect, but like really fluid, high frame rate animations. Uh, you can't say that about every new phone with the skin, but yeah, it just buries so many features in the settings to mess with if you want. You know how previous V-series phones, uh, the V10, the V20 had that second screen? Obviously this one doesn't have that, but they do have this optional floating bar so you can bring it in from the edge and keep some app shortcuts there or your favorite actions, whatever you want. It's basically kind of like Apps Edge on the new Samsung phones. You can rearrange the buttons in the bottom of the phone in any order you want. So you can add or remove buttons, place it exactly how you want. If you take a lot of screenshots, you can add that capture button there. I'm happy to see that still exist. And there's all these smart settings too, to adjust profiles basically based on different scenarios. So when you're at home, it might turn on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and turn down the brightness and set your alarm. But when you get to work, it does something different. It has a couple themes built in too, and then of course a themes store if none of the built-in ones suit your fancy. So if you're into that, you can really make this phone look a lot different. So there's a lot going on here with the software. Obviously because it's Android, you can use as much of it or as little of it as you want. So you might not be interested in any of the things I just mentioned, in which case you never touch them. But if you're interested in any of that, it's all included. So the number three best feature of the V30 is the design. So you've seen it a lot by now in this video, but yeah, it's pretty dope. This is one of those phones that now looks very 2017. It's the huge display up front, the 82% screen to body ratio that kind of curves over at the edges. It makes this sort of a glass sandwich design. It's not anything we haven't seen before. In fact, if you didn't know better, you might say it looks a lot like a Galaxy Note 8 because it does, but yeah, the sides sort of round off smoothly. You've got the antenna bands matching pretty well a really thin and lightweight device in the hand, IP certified water resistant again, like the design is really complete. Uh, and this is sort of what you would expect when you put a dream phone together, minimal bezels, the camera bump on the back is the tiniest of bumps, so no big deal, it doesn't rock the phone or anything when it's down, and the logos aren't too much of an eyesore either. Literally my only real complaint with the design is I wish they put the headphone jack on the bottom. That's it, so everything else is props to LG. So then we get to number two, and the number two best feature on this phone is the display itself up front. This new screen is incredibly good. It's a six inch 2880 by 1440 P OLED display. 
and it gets crazy bright, so I don't have a NITS rating for it, but it is totally visible outdoors much more easily than most, and it honestly rivals some of the best Samsung displays we've seen in the past year or two in colors and brightness and clarity and saturation. Now obviously, 2880 by 1440, that's an 18 by nine aspect ratio, or as I like to call it, since I learned fractions, two to one. So it's a bit narrower than your typical 16 by nine. So when you're watching videos, or using certain apps, sometimes gaming, you get these black bars on either side of the display. But again, it's not that big of a deal since it's an OLED and the black parts of the screen go completely blank. The viewing angles are pretty good. The curved corners are really great. I mean, this is an all around great display and I think this is what would really put it on the map for me. If I hadn't seen this phone in person and I was just kind of curious about it and I saw this screen, that's why I would be interested in it. And then it would get me to the rest of the stuff. But that's just the second best thing. So to top that, the number one best feature on the V30 is around the back, and it's that camera, or those cameras. This phone sports dual cameras again, like all its older brothers. On the back, it's one 16 megapixel F1.6 main camera with OIS, and then a secondary super wide angle 13 megapixel F1.9 camera. And they've done these dual cameras before with the wide angle secondary, this time just with pretty much everything around them being improved. So the main camera's a lot better. Uh, shots off this thing look top notch. Again, I have to disclaim that it's pre-production stuff, but they're clean. They have punch, saturated colors, plenty of contrast and detail, and dynamic range. And of course, having a fixed f1.6 aperture means you can get pretty close to a subject and then the background will fade away to a decent bokeh, which is cool. And then the super wide angle camera has less distortion than before, so less of that fisheye GoPro look and more of just a really wide angle rectilinear perspective, which is awesome. And then the camera app itself is really impressive, really what makes this the number one feature. So you can drag the shutter button to move between the two cameras, zoom in and out, which is smart. That's also what Samsung is doing with the Note, so it's not the first place we've seen it, but it's very 2017. And it has your usual massive amount of settings, auto HDR, auto phone triggers, self timers, all that stuff. Uh, but then you look at all the modes. Look at all these modes in the phone. Auto mode is obviously the one that most people use, but enthusiasts will get into manual mode, manual video, time lapses, panoramas, slow motion, all that stuff. And then there's something called cine mode. And when you turn on cine mode, the camera records to a flat log color profile so you can maximize sensor data and dynamic range and then add color later. The cine mode in this phone's video camera is literally made for people to import it from the phone and bring it to a computer and edit it later. If that's not screaming enthusiast phone to you, I don't know what is. So this is kind of the ultimate enthusiast photo and video camera. So obviously stuff like the video quality itself and more photo quality testing and the battery life, those things will have to be tested for a full review. But right off the bat, V30 looks really promising, and I didn't even cover everything. But it's pretty clear this will be a mobile photography and videography powerhouse, and a phone that enthusiasts who like all those boxes to be checked will really like. So let me know, would you get a V30? I mean, obviously with Note 8 right around the corner, with iPhone 8 about to come out, possibly having an excellent camera as well. Is V30 on your radar? Let me know. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.